hear me clearly by putting a one in the comments for me hello 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 y'all we're gonna have to have a conversation today because hi lovey y'all we're gonna have to have a conversation the conversation that we're having today is desperation is destructive is it time for you to decenter men right now where you are in your life um or decenter the idea of a romantic relationship right now um i'm gonna give you five questions to ask yourself if you answer yes or if there's any ounce of confusion to any of these questions you definitely might want to consider uh consider decentering um, men right now for the time being because there are some more things that are priority that need to be focused on okay maybe this little bang ain't gonna worry me today i don't think i'm splitting it up but for those who do not know me my name is l antoinette i'm a feminine lifestyle strategist and what i do is that i support my clients in major ways so i basically use scripture science and psychology to support my clients in mastering their authentic feminine design regulating their emotions as well as creating seamless income and seamless income basically is you being able to create money in a very very smooth way that's better for me um that's what seamless income does and i teach you this like i said using scripture science and psychology it is literally how i built a six-figure business from the ground up um my work has supported my clients in going from five figures to six figures um to healing their partnerships and their marriages and the way that they communicate to healing addictions a multitude of things that i could go on and on uh, about but my results speak for themselves i've been doing this work for a while now i don't think i like this color so i'm going to change it mm, might be going back to the normal um but that is a little bit about me and what i do today i'm gonna be talking about like i said desperation is dangerous is it time for you to really start decentering men <sighs> because y'all i've been having a lot of conversations I'm, <laughs> Oof, I'm trying to let me see how i can say this you know when i was a little girl i used to always hear from women that there was a time period that women go through and sometimes the time period happens sometimes after 35 sometimes it's between 35 and like 42 or sometimes between 35 and 45 but even if you're 20 something, this is something that you really need to pay attention to. After years of not getting what society said that you're supposed to have, if you're not married by a certain amount of time or you're not this and you're not that, certain women start feeling this pressure. They start feeling this pressure because they start to feel like, oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to have a baby in time. Oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to get married. All this type of stuff before this age bracket and this and that and this and that and this and that. OK. Women are operating from a space of desperation. And I'm telling you this because I'm having conversations with women all of the time. We are making decisions and we are bringing children into situations where they are broken. Okay. It is unfair. It is very self-centered. It is very um, inconsiderate. And you are harming yourself. And so what I'm going to focus on today is what is really happening with you from a spiritual perspective spiritual per blah, blah, can i talk today a spiritual perspective and i'm going to use some statistics today to kind of give you some information because i really want y'all to understand that i'm not just telling you something like out of it so here are five statistics that i'm going to use tonight that literally have been taken when it comes down to women in love and what's happening right now in the world and statistically, you might want to pay attention because, like I said, I'm going to use science, scripture, and psychology. So today, we're going to we're going to assess the psychological aspect using this um, using the statistics, and then we're also going to assess the spiritual aspect of how this is impacting you. Okay, so first statistic that you need to be very very clear on number one is 88 percent of Americans marry for love, making this the most common motivation for union. That's the first thing you need to understand. 88% according to, and these stats that I'm getting are going to all be coming from the various organizations, the American College of Cardiology, the PubMed, Harvard Gazette, 
the cycle uh, the journey of the journal of Sci uh, social psychology the pew research center stanford medicine you gov in the journal of sexual medicine so i'm not just going to be telling you something i'm literally giving you these stats so 88 percent of americans are marrying for love and that's their primary motivation a recent survey found out that 61 percent of men and women have a desire to get married about 19 percent of teenagers are currently involved in romantic relationships and in 2024 an estimate of 47 percent of americans will be single also the average length of a courtship is two years Pay attention to all of these because I'm going to break all of these down. First things we're going to get on, we're going to talk about is love, desire, experience, time, and self. Because all of these things are connected and you figuring out whether or not it's time for you to really start decentering men because you're operating from a desperate place. I can tell you right now, if you're chasing anything or chasing anyone, you're operating from a desperate place. You're operating from a desperate place. And here's the reality. You know, it's not necessarily anything that you should take and feel like, oh, my God, I'm this person that's just operating from a space of desperation. Listen, we do what we know. We do what we've been trained to do. We do what we saw growing up. We do the only thing that we know how to do. The key thing is, is to start asking yourself these five questions I'm going to ask you because it's very, very vital and extremely important. So I'm going to explain to you how societal influence has really kicked it up a notch and tricked us into believing things about love. And because we have based our perceptions around that thing, we are struggling in our relationships, period. Because there is no reality or we're not living in the proper reality. We're not assessing, okay? Again, for those who don't know me, my name is L. Antoinette. I'm a feminine lifestyle strategist and I support my clients in three key areas. I use scripture, science, and psychology to support them in mastering their feminine design regulating their emotions, as well as creating income in a very seamless way, meaning that we don't hustle to make money. This is what I've done to be able to build a six-figure business and support other women in being able to do the same, okay? So let's go ahead and get straight into it. I normally give my spiel about different things. I will tell you this, understand that you are high-level currency, and I'll go more into that because I'm going to be talking about a little bit of that today. Um, and as well as you need to understand that your belief impacts your biology and your biology Im impacts the way that you um, influences the way that you behave. So if you believe something about yourself, expect the body to come into agreement with that and expect the behavior to exhibit what is happening on the inside of the body. OK, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into desperation is destructive. Is it time for you to really start decentering men in your life right now? OK. So the first thing I want you to know is that you hear a lot of women say, y'all gonna see me playing on my hair trying to fix it till I'm satisfied. But you hear a lot of women say, especially on social media, oh, I wanna, I wanna feel like a fairy tale. I want a relationship that's like a fairy tale. I want this, I want that, you know, I want princess treatment, yada 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 yada. Yad. Okay. But here's the thing I think that we don't realize when we say things. There's power of life and death in the tongue. Okay? There's power of life and death in the tongue. So the things that you speak truly come to pass in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so the words you speak actually lord over your life and when you understand that you're very careful about the things that you say so when women say i want a fairy tale type of love i want you to understand what you're saying fairy tale by definition one of the definitions of fairy tale is a made-up story usually designed to mislead a fairy tale is defined as a made up story, usually designed to mislead. It sounds a lot like the television that we're watching today, the media that we're listening to today, the television that we were watching as children, and a lot of the millennials, because I can only speak from the millennial perspective, we grew up in the era where it was the 90s and everything was very overly romantic and it was a lot of Disney and a lot of fairy tales when it came down to love. And we have a very skewed view of what love is, which is why we enter into relationships. And when these things don't look like the fairy tale, so much other stuff starts to happen. Because we're not living in an honest reality. We're living in a made, we're trying to create a, a recreate a made up story that was really intended to deceive you in the first place. So your idea of love is very much so in your feelings. Like you said, 88% of Americans marry for love. Love is not the primary reason that you should be marrying someone. Sorry, not sorry. 
That is not the primary reasons of why you should be marrying someone just because you feel like you love them. That's not enough. It takes more than that. And you have to know that for yourself. But here's the here's the the big thing about it and why it's an issue. These unrealistic on a, I'm gonna tell you how this impacts you on a spiritual level when it comes down to love. These unrealistic perceptions and expectations that media has given you, they create these patterns in your mind, in your subconscious belief. If you are not careful, it teaches you that love should be effortless. It should be flawless. It should feel like a constant search of like perfection and all this different type of things. When in reality, it's not about that. It's actually rooted in kindness. It's actually rooted in compromise. It's actually rooted in empathy. It's actually rooted in effort. And the reality of why a lot of people are unable to do relationship like that is because they don't have relationship with themselves. They don't love themselves. The scripture tells you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no way that you can love your neighbor down that keeps disrespecting you and dishonoring you. And you say honestly that you love yourself when in reality, you can't possibly love yourself because how you are allowing yourself to be treated is speaking volumes about you. It's speaking and it's showing everything that needs to be. It's very clear about who you are because on a subconscious level, you believe that this is supposed to look a certain. I'm sorry, I'm going to drop my iPad. This is supposed to look a certain kind of way. Love is supposed to be a certain kind of way. When in reality, your idea of love is skewed. skewed. It's skewed because you are idealizing. People come and tell you they like you. And you're like, oh my gosh, they like me. They like what they see. They like the view of you. They don't know you well enough to say that they like you. When people come to say, oh, I want you, I like you, I want you. People don't know you enough to say that they want you. They just want access to you. And you're unable to be able to recognize that because you think, you believe in your mind that, oh, this is what love is supposed to be like. This is what love feels like. When in reality, you are creating these patterns within yourself where you're constantly seeking validation in the smallest ways. Do I look good? I wonder, does he really like me? The concern is not yourself. The concern is everything else outside of yourself, which is damaging, which is dangerous. And it literally puts you in a position to be begging people to give you the nurture that you should be giving yourself. That is the reality. You are dis disconnected from who you are because you don't really understand what love is. And this is the thing that gets me. If 88% of Americans are marrying based on love and most of us don't know what love is, that sends a strong signal of why we are sitting in a space where having all these divorces and all these relationships don't seem to work out. Because if you don't really, if all you're doing is marrying based on love and your perception of love has come from Disney movies, has come from literally all this phony media stuff, even all this 90s R&B. Girl, I am a, listen, I am a 90s R&B girl, okay? But the reality of the situation is Disney and, R and 90s R&B has set us back to thinking that this is the way love is supposed to be when in reality it's not. And we've created these patterns in our mind, believing that love should be perfect. So the minute somebody don't do something immediately, when you think that they are supposed to be doing it, you make your exit and you keep wondering why you keep closing all these doors. And you seem like it seems to be like no other doors are opening up for you. You are listening to people who are setting you up, not for success, but setting you up for failure because they're teaching you to idealize things like people, like marriage. And on a spiritual level, it, you're, you're disconnected from yourself because you're not even understanding or seeing this. In order to receive love, you have to be love, beloved. You have to be love to yourself in order to receive love. That's the way it goes. Universal law is just that thing. When it says God is not mocked for whatever man sows, ye shall reap. That's a real thing. If you sow no love to yourself, expect no love from anyone else. It doesn't make sense. The people you have around you in your space are a reflection of you. Thank you, my love. They are respect. They are a reflection of you. People love to talk about. I don't know why I keep attracting people who don't treat my heart well, who don't respect me. Do you treat your heart well? Why do you interact with people who disrespect you? Why is that the consistent thing? See, then it comes back to this question right here. Who taught you about romantic love? Who or what taught you about what romantic love looked like? 
Did you grow up in a household where you saw romantic love? You saw a healthy marriage. Okay? Do you understand that? Because it's very, very important. What did you see? What did you see growing up? What was modeled for you? You got ahead of me, baby. That's what I'm getting into right now. What shaped your reality? The question, who taught you about romantic love? Who or what? Because that right there is your foundational point. And if your foundational point is not self-love, you're going to be looking for love from other people and seeking validation from other people, which is unhealthy in the long run for you. For you. And not because, oh, what if this person just leaves? But what if this person actually leaves Earth and they're no longer here anymore? If you are so dependent upon that person's love, you are going to crack in the event that something happens to this individual. And we should not put that much trust in other human beings to validate us when you have internal value. See, when you don't understand self-love, it's because you don't understand your innate value. You don't understand that you don't have to perform that you are time, energy, attention and money. When you understand these things about yourself, you spend time with you. You focus the majority of your energy on what is going to elevate you. You spend the majority of your attention on things that are going to amplify what it is that is within you. You spend your money on things that are going to put you in a better position. So you're not out here looking for someone to come and take you out of your masculine responsibilities. What you understand about yourself is that you have masculine energy, left brain. You have feminine energy, right brain. And you know how to live in your essence energy. And you know how to lean into your left brain, logistical, analytical, decision making, action taking, money making energy. If you don't understand the balance of both of those, it's going to be a struggle. So who taught you about love? And if you really answer that question and you're saying, okay, I didn't really see this model for me. I didn't really, or I saw this television taught me this. Then it's time for you to consider to decenter men from your existence right now. The focus does not, and when I say decenter, decenter literally means for you to shift focus. And some of us are so fixed, fixated and focused on marriage and focused on getting all these other things. Thank you, my love. That you're not, you're not, you're repeating cycles that's not even getting you the result that you want. Feminine women don't seek answers. They ask specific questions. I keep repeating this pattern in my relationships with love. Where did I learn love? Why does this keep happening? Why do I keep choosing this reality? OK, because nobody is doing anything to you. You are choosing a reality that is destructive to you because desperation is destructive. So why are you so desperate for love? See, we have to get down to the bottom of that, because if you don't, you will make your decisions and attach to people from the basis that you don't really know what love is. And you didn't really get that growing up. So you don't have an understanding of it. There's no foundation. When you are listening to media and you are listening to different people telling you, oh, love should feel like this. And if it ain't like this, you need to leave people alone. You better understand and know what love means to you and what it what it needs to look like, feel like and how you exude it to other people. See, those things are very clear. I always instruct women who ask me, what questions can I ask on a date? I always say the same thing. One specific set of questions. What does love look like for you? What does love feel like for you? How do you show love? These three things that you're asking when you're asking someone that question, number one, they're going to explain to you what love looks like. And you, if you know yourself, if you are self-aware, you can assess yourself to see if that's something that you're even open to participating in. Maybe love looks like this to this person. And that's not something that you're really into or something that you really know how to do. You can make a conscious decision not to waste your own time and not to waste someone else's time. Why should you know what love feels like when you ask them, what does love feel like to them? They should be able to articulate that because if they can't articulate what love feels like to them, it's because they don't know love. And if they don't know love, how are they going to love you? You're going to have to start making it make sense. You have to be thinking long term. You can't want marriage and not be thinking about long term. Is not making it doesn't make any sense. What does how do you exhibit love? 
So when the person articulates how they exhibit love, and let's just say that y'all continue to do this thing and it grows, and this person is continuously saying that, oh my goodness, you know, love, 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 I love you, I love you, I love you, where you can refer back to what that person initially said, how they exhibit love to see if that is an accurate perception of love, of love. This will show you, you just have to assess who taught you what romantic love looked like. Who taught you? Because if you don't know, you're not ready to get out here and get in a relationship because you don't have relationship with yourself. And if you don't have relationship with yourself and you're not doing your own homework, how do you think that you are going to operate in a group project, a team family is a group project. Marriage is a team project. If you're not working with you and doing your own work, how are you going to join in community and do that work? It's not making any sense. Especially when you don't know what love is. Again, who taught you that? Because spiritually, you idolizing this portrayal of love and it not going the way you need to do, what it does is that it creates a disconnect for you from what love really is see you have the perception that love is material things that someone buying you things and doing this you're not even checking for their character you're not even checking for their character you're out here saying that oh i just want a man that could provide provide what about his character because if he's not and let me, let me put you on game beloved if he's not earning his money in a way that is proper okay and he could be working a bit, but if he's not operating from a proper space, a righteous space, he ain't going to be able to keep that bag anyway. So it's no reason for you to get hyped up about somebody else's bag. Women who get hyped up about somebody else's bag is a woman who don't understand how to create her own bag. Because that's a woman that under, don't, doesn't, doesn't understand that she is money. She is money. She is money. I heard this message today, Ted Talk. I've never heard it. Thank you for sharing. I'm definitely going to go check it out now. When you understand that you are money and you can create it at any time for yourself, you don't worship it. Therefore, there is no the love. You know, you're not in the space where the root of the love of money is the root of all evil. You're not in that energy because you understand that you can create that. So you're not looking after someone else's bag because you understand you know how to create your own. Again, what did you learn and who taught you about romantic love? And if you can't get clear on that. And you don't understand it or if it came from a source from society instead of your creator, it's time to start assessing that because that may be the reason why you continue to be in these cycle of relationships that are not elevating you, but draining you. You understand every relationship you get yourself in and you give your time, which I'm going to go into how much that that takes from you, how much that drains you, how much that really devalues you to be everywhere and all over the place. Just allowing anyone just no access to you. That is poor. I saw a meme that said it's poor, poor spiritual hygiene to allow people to have access to you like that. And I agree. Everyone having access to you is absolutely disgusting because everyone does not mean you well. That means that you are not vetting and discerning the proper people coming into your existence. Again, who taught you about love? Because you could not know love and allow people to come into your existence and dishonor you. The way that you do. Makes no sense. The second thing. The second thing you need to pay attention to. Because desperation is destructive. Is it time for you to decenter men? Is let's get into these desires. Are your desires even authentic? <laughs> see I see women get on this app. Talking about what pr they want princess treatment. Do you know what princess treatment actually is for you? Can you identify it if someone came to you. And actually said hey what does princess treatment look like. Outside of buying you 50 million roses. Do you really understand what a soft life is before you go charging into someone else's pockets asking if they can provide you with that? Can you identify what a soft life looks like for you? No. Or are you looking at social media, looking at all of these memes and all of these stories and all of these things that you don't even know or real or not? And you're basing your desires on that based on what you believe about love. See, influence desires from advertising. Whether it's on TikTok versus somebody talking to you or an advertisement that you just see in general. 
This creates subconscious patterns in your mind to make you seek immediate gratification. This is why you want that boy to be your man and you just went on a date with him. This is why you in your bag, in your mind talking about, oh, he, he the one after one date. Because you got this instant gratification thing in your mind that has been placed there by society and you desire a boyfriend so much because you see so much content online about marriage and how you should have a man and this and this and that and all of these things when you have not done your work to even prepare so you're not even an energetic match to receive a healthy relationship because you within yourself are not healthy because you don't really know your own true desires you like i say it all the time you get thirsty what's the first thing you go for if the first thing you go for when you're thirsty is not water, you are under a program because your body will never ask for Sprite. Your body will never ask for juice. Your body will never ask for a Coke. Your body craves water. And if you grab anything else, if you order anything else outside of the water, when you say that you were thirsty, it is simply because you have been taught, hey, you got other options. Even though it's going to kill you, go ahead and drink this, this corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup Sprite. Even though it's going to put holes in your gut, go ahead and eat this bread that we have to put fillers in that's going to make you sick and mess up your gut. And then we're going to offer you gut health supplies. See, let's go ahead and get directly into it. Where are your desires coming from? These people telling you what to eat. Your body desires whole foods, not fast foods. Your desire, your body and your, your spirit desires wholeness. Not half-heartedness in a relationship. You, your spiritual self, seeks wholeness, is chasing wholeness. Not in another person. Where are these desires coming from? Y'all are so stuck on marriage is the goal, marriage is the goal, marriage is the goal. Y'all better kill that mentality. And I'm going to tell you why. When you set a goal, when you reach that goal, you tend to stop working. And I'm going to go ahead and get into it. This is how women lose themselves in a marriage. Just like that. Because they go into these situations saying that marriage is the goal. And they get married. And they stop working on themselves. They let their passions go. They let their body go. They let their mind go. They sacrifice everything they can for their entire families. And they think they're going to get a prize. And when they end up sick. When they end up in a space where their body is completely inflamed. When they end up in a space to where they can't seem to just go on. Now it's a problem. But you lose yourself when you make that a goal. If your goal, thank you, my love. I believe your goal that you want is lifetime partnership with a milestone of marriage, baby. That's what you want, right? You want a lifetime partnership. With a milestone, with marriage being one of the milestones on that partnership. Just like if you wanted children with that part, Like parenthood would be a milestone on that partnership. That's what you really want. But now I want to be married. Now it's a good to be married. Thank you, my love, for these gifts. And you lose your absolute self. And then you want to get mad at the man. See, let's, let's get into it. You want to get at him. I gave you all my good years. Good, good terminology. You gave. You gave your time away. You gave your energy away. You gave your attention away. You took all of that off of yourself and sacrificed it for other people. And you think that you deserve a reward when the Most High told you that your body is a temple and that you are your first priority? And you think you want to get mad at other human beings for allowing you to do work? Baby, nobody... Let me tell y'all something. Y'all not seeing what's happening in society? People don't want to work anymore. So now they're doing everything with the robots. People don't want to work. So if you're willing to get in there and break your back, you better know people will absolutely use up your masculine energy so you can burn yourself out so they can rest. They will do it because you're not smart enough to know. You're not in tune enough to know with yourself to know that you are, as a woman, rest is required. It's required for you. You don't even rest. You listen to what society telling you to keep hustling and do this and do that. To chase, chase and do the. Where are these desires coming from? Where are they coming from? On a spiritual level, desires are driven. Desire, look, desires that are driven by external influences can hinder your spiritual growth 
and your connection to higher truths. See, you'll get mad at God because you ain't made enough money in your business the way you feel like you're supposed to be making money. Even though you signed up to work this business because you wanted to make money instead of wanting to change lives, you were chasing a bag. And it tells you in scripture when you chase a bag, it almost takes up wings and flies away from you when you chase wealth. And now you're mad at God because you ain't got no money in your business when in reality, your desires weren't right. You were chasing external gratification because you wanted to get a six-figure business. When you didn't realize and you don't realize when the true desires of your heart are to truly impact, to truly influence people to take action, to elevate their lives, the money comes to you, baby. You don't even have to look for it. Ask me how I know. I built a six-figure business doing it. I've taught women how to do the same thing. What are the true desires of your heart? So the question becomes, are your, are your desires your own are your desires thank you my love for these gifts are your desires your own are they really you really gotta start asking yourself that and i'm gonna say this and this is the only aspect i'm gonna speak on this but this is specifically for my queens who have been sa'd those of you who are out here engaging in that type an activity sexual activity you need to make sure the desires that you have within yourself are your own. You should assess yourself in that area because you were violated in that area. And you need to make sure that you are 100% comfortable in understanding your own body, understanding your own self before you invite anyone else into that space. Because sometimes there were in those type of situations, things were put on you. That you may not necessarily have desired. And you need to be very clear with yourself and how you're moving. Because you don't want to further harm self. Okay? So it is very important to start asking yourself, are your it, are these desires even mine? Do I really want to sprite? My body don't want to sprite, I know for sure. But I want to sprite. But I want to sprite because I've been growing up with Obey the Thirst. You know, I could probably run five sprite commercials in my mind singing. I can run McDonald's commercial when I was a kid. These jingles and all those things were genius because, of course, jingles is how you create subliminal messages. You know the ABCs that you still know to this day? Yeah, it was a jingle. That's how you got programmed in your mind. Just like ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I'm pretty sure y'all can finish. I'm loving it. Yeah. Just like that. What are you loving? You associate that with McDonald's. These are subliminal things that are happening in life that you are not aware of and you're not paying attention to, my love. Like, for real. You're not paying attention to this thing. It's so important. You are preaching, change your mindset, be celibate yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. It would drastically change. I always tell women all the time when I got divorced, literally took almost two years. I'm almost two years in of just not because I needed to decenter. At first, it started off as me decentering and repairing my view of men. But then it became how I valued myself and how I elevated and how men treated me. What I notice is when you're not quick to be like, they love that in real time. They act like they gonna try you, but they love women with standards. And when you begin to elevate in, in your essence and understand your true desires, a lot of men become unattractive to you anyway. It's a certain type of man because you become very intentional about your moves. Okay. So it's so important and so, so vital, right? That you really begin to understand if your desires are your own. Do you really want to do this? Or are you doing this because you want to people please? And let me tell you something, little miss people please. Or people pleasing is a violation of spiritual law. People pleasing is a violation of spiritual law. It's a huge violation, actually. So when you and that's why you feel exhausted because you keep doing it. That's why you keep getting the short end of the stick. That is what you reap for sowing time, energy, attention and money into things that don't value you. Beloved, you're going to get the short end of the stick. You're in violation of spiritual law. You want them to see you as a good person, don't you? You want them to see you as the backbone, don't you? You always there. You're such a good friend. No, you're being a fool because you're exhausting yourself to oblivion for people in reality, nine times out of ten, 
they wouldn't do it for you. And even if they would, they shouldn't because you should not have to exhaust yourself to oblivion to please a person because we're not here to please people. Are you here to seek the approval of man or are you here to seek the approval of the most high? And when you notice when you're trying to people please, people are never satisfied. So why do you continue to do this? What is the root of that desire to please? Are your desires your own? That's the question. And if your desires are not your own or if you have confusion about your desires, then baby, you need to decenter men. Men don't need to be the focus of what you got going on because you got bigger fish to fry. We talk about you. You need to get your temple in order. You need to love yourself so you can love your neighbor. Because you ain't loving nobody when you're not loving yourself. You're not loving anyone when you're allowing yourself to be dishonored and disrespected. Like, no. Okay? So here's the third thing that's very important that we have to realize. Our experiences. Now, this one was based on, you notice the stat that I used was... um. About 19% of teenagers are currently involved. This 2024 stats are currently involved in romantic relationships. Now, I want you to just do the math real quick. Now, we know with the teenagers of the day, we see them. And it's, it's different. It's real different outside. But we see them, right? 19% of teenagers are in relationships right now. Who teaching them love? What do they know about love? What is being modeled for them? Are their desire, are the desires that they have, are they actually their own? It says scientifically, because you know I use scripture, science, and psychology to be able to dissect these things. But it literally tells you that the frontal lobe is not fully developed all the way up until age 26. So we have teenagers out here having experiences, not knowing what love is. Having man-made desires or ingrained desires from programming, from media, television, social media, and all these different type of things. What type of experiences you think they have? What type of experiences were you having when you were a teenager? Let's get into it. What experience were you having? This lack of self-awareness and unrealistic expectations can create fears of vulnerability, rejection. This leads to subconscious defense mechanism. Little Miss Avoiding Attachment Style, but on team, I'm talking about you because of your past experiences. Little Miss Emotional Detachment, but on team, I'm talking about you. Oh yeah, Little Miss Self Sabotage, when things go well because it's boring and you don't really understand, you know, because you're used to the toxicity. All of these things are hindering genuine intimacy and connection, which is actually what you crave. All because. When you didn't know what love is and you didn't understand your desires, you put yourself in situations where you experience things that have damaged you. Because guess what? The reason why you're scared now is because you have a scar. When you get scared, you have a, now you got a scar. Thank you, my love. And because you have that scar, now you're operating from a space of scarcity. Lack. Lack. Is a lack of trust. And see, lack is not of the most high. And femininity, the base of your femininity is in your faith, which is trust. But you can't do that because of your not knowing what love is. You're not really understanding if your desires are your own. You are throwing yourself into relationship experiences that you are not prepared for. And they are crashing and burning. And every time they are crashing and burning, it is taking a little bit more of your light. And you better recognize and look up broken heart syndrome because that is a real thing. You only going to be able to take so many hearts, heart hits before you fall down. Okay? So you got to start paying attention to what is happening. When you are, when our experiences in relationships, they really can, they reflect who we are. They reflect either whether or not we are in spiritual alignment or they reflect the fact that we are in discord. And we're not right. And this is not something that we're supposed to. For example, feeling like you're emotionally disconnected in relationships may indicate two things that you need to know right now. If you're in a relationship right now, you're like, I'm just emotionally, I'm just not connected. I'm not this and I'm that. I'm about to put you on game. Thank you, my love, for these gifts. The first thing that you have to understand is that if you're feeling emotionally disconnected from your person, there may be a need for spiritual healing of past realities. Because you may be living in a fantasy. Because you know we love to do. We love to romanticize a person before we actually get to know them. We love to fall in, I, fall in love with the idea of an individual. 
And then when we are faced with the reality of that person and we really start experiencing them, we want to get mad and say, we don't have this connection and we're detached. When in reality, baby, you need to heal that past reality that you created in your mind because it wasn't even real. You've made a whole fake genre in your mind of a movie of you being with this man and what who he is. And he ain't none of that. He ain't none of that. He's not any of that. It's time for you to heal from. You need some spiritual healing from that past reality because you're creating things in your mind. You're creating stories of your mind of what this love is going to be and what this love is supposed to look like. Because you don't really know what love is. So you have nothing to compare it to. You have nothing to assess it to. To see if this really is love. Because you're not really rooted in love. You're not love. So you can't recognize it. And because you can't recognize it. You're in a space where you're living in that past reality. Like man he used to do this. He used to. Did he? Was he? I have conversations with women all the time. Who tell me about their husbands. And how they don't do this. And how they don't do that. And the first thing I'm asking them baby. Was he doing that in the beginning? Because people are conditioned to what happened in the beginning. What's he doing in the beginning? All he do is play video games and he don't really talk to me. And, and you know, all he want to do is be in front of the TV. Okay, tell me about your earlier dates. Well, I used to come over a lot and we used to watch TV. And, um, you know, we used to play games and stuff together. Okay, it just sounds like an elevation or amplification of who he has already been. So, let's heal from the past reality. The past false reality that you got going on in your mind. Because you've created him to be somebody else that he's not. Because apparently he's been this person the entire time. And we love to be like, oh, it's a switch up. No. Two things. If you're feeling emotionally disconnected and you've been in this situation for a while, let's get on these past realities and start healing that. So we can deal with what's happening right now. And then the other aspect of that is it may be time for self-discovery as far as understanding what you need now in this season. But if you're not aware of yourself, if you're not working on yourself, you don't even know that you need to assess yourself consistently to see what it is that you may need in this season. Because how about seasons change? In this season, you may need somebody just to be here and just talk. In another season, you may need something else. You need to be so aware of yourself so the experience continues to elevate. The reason why experience, relationship experiences do not elevate and people struggle is because you have not studied your relationship patterns or cycles you have not studied your relationship patterns and cycles so you keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again and that is your experience and each time it is getting harder and harder and harder for you to be able to do this because you keep you keep running into these experiences because you don't understand what love is to you you don't know what you truly desire. You only know what TikTok told you what love's supposed to be and what YouTube and what you're supposed to feel. You, you're you searching for something outside of you when the kingdom of heaven is within you. When are you going to start acting like it? You literally were created with the God frequency. Luke 17 and 21. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Again, when are you going to start acting like it? You live in a society. You live in a realm. You are a spirit being having a human experience. You have the, the ability to be able to operate in both realms to make it work for you. The Most High gives you a clear way to be able to do that. And the first element of that is simply choosing your birthright of understanding that, guess what? Abundance is my birthright according to John 10, 10, where it says the enemies come to steal, kill, and destroy. I've done enough of that with my life. I would like to live on the other end of that, which is the Messiah's come to plentifulness there are plenty of amazing suitors out here i'm telling you what i know y'all know how they like to say oh you, well he gone i ain't gonna get into that but you know how people like to say oh if you're over 35 you've hit a wall and this is sweetheart i'm 40 have an amazing dating life absolutely amazing do you hear me have not always been this way though it took work for me to do my own work to be able to recognize the type of men that deserve to be in my experience who deserve to be able to get access to me OK, I determine how this experience is going to go because I understand what love looks like to me, what it feels like to me, what it is to me, how I show it. I understand my own desires as a woman so I can articulate them well. And when the brother says that he can't do it, I'm not mad. Not mad. OK, 
I also, so when I realize those things, that love and desire is not mixing, I'm not going to allow someone to experience me. And you shouldn't either. Your people who experience you, to experience you is a privilege. It is a privilege. So the question you have to ask yourself here, have you studied your relationship patterns and cycles? If the answer is no, if you don't really know what the cycle is and you don't understand why you keep repeating and doing the same thing over again, the answer is no, you don't know. Now I have a new service called a, um, a pattern, like it's like a pattern recognizing service. So if you are in a space where you are, how can I say this? Basically, if you keep meeting the same person in the different body, it's a pattern. And it's time for you to do pattern recognition so you can stop what you're doing. So you can stop choosing that. What I'm going to do in that service is we're going to do a rework. We're going to go back. And I'm going to help you, okay? I'm going to support you and being able to figure out what exactly are the patterns, okay? So if you know, then why are you single? <laughs> Sweetheart. Let me see. Do I feel like, I'm trying to see, do I feel like correcting today or do I feel like just blocking you? Because it's, it's just one or the other. But um, trust me when I tell you, if I wanted to be married again right now, I could. Absolutely. I am very intentional about who I choose to lead me, beloved. So it's nothing for me to be married. Trust me. Last year, three men alone asked me. So trust me, it's nothing for me to be married. It's about me being married and it being alignment with what the Most High has for me. And if you don't know the Most High, I suggest you get to know him for yourself. And maybe you won't have to ask these type of questions because you would recognize that even in scripture that it speaks about, my love, it's better for you to spend time to yourself. And that's what Paul talked about. So you can focus solely on yourself. So when you get to the space and you have a partnership, you don't lose yourself in that partnership, beloved. So pick somebody else to play with, okay? Pick, find you somebody else to play with because next time I'm just going to block you. So keep it cool and keep it cute, beloved, all right? So understand, again, have you studied? And let me ask you why you asked me. Have you studied your relationship patterns? Have you studied the cycles and patterns in your life? Why are you worried about mine? Okay? Because I know mine. And I've done my work. And my results speak for themselves. Okay? So ask yourself, you know, that question. Have you studied your relationship patterns? Have you studied your cycles? So that's the way that you're going to find out why you keep repeating the same thing over and over again. I'm going to tell you something about myself, right? I used, I had to find the pattern within myself. It started off with me attracting liars, but that's because I used to lie to myself about what I wanted. Then it went to me morphing into attracting cheaters, but that's because I was cheating myself because I would cheat myself out of people really getting to experience the authentic me because I was ashamed of who I was. See, let's get into it. Okay. That evolved from cheating to me. Basically at that point, I'm abusing myself. Because I'm not allowing the fullness of myself to be able to come through. I'm 90 pounds. At the time, I was 90 pounds heavier. I wasn't healthy. So all of these things were happening and it was evolving. It just kept evolving, evolving, evolving. And guess what? Because I was lying to myself, because I was cheating myself, because I was abusing myself. Guess what my relationships look like? Guess what they look like? A, a mirror. A mirror. That's exactly what it looks like. When you are when you are worried about, okay, why is this person like, how could you abandon me? In what ways are you abandoning yourself? Because here's the reality. We are not here to be attached to anything of this world. Because anything in this world can leave you. Nothing in this world is permanent or forever. Nothing in this world is permanent or forever. You have to prepare your mind to understand that. So you're clear. When things make an exit from your life, you start to develop the mindset that there is something that is coming into your life. Even when you think about people, think about the many times that a relatives or someone has passed away and then somebody else is pregnant. You find out right after that somebody is pregnant. OK, releasing, receiving feminine. You have to pay attention to that. All right. So have you studied the patterns of your relationship? 
Now, let's go ahead and get into this aspect of time. Because this is the one that's really important of how this is going. So you have love. When you don't know what love is, your desires are skewed. When your desires are skewed, you put yourself in, in situations and experiences that don't serve you. And then the next thing that you do is that you waste time. This statistic says this, okay? In 2024, and I'm sorry, the average length of a courtship is two years. Two years. I want, there are some women who are, have lived their lives in the last 10 years and they've had about five of those. So you've picked up five different people in that two year, two year, two year, two year, two year, or whatever, two year. And what do you really have to show for that? When you have a distorted perception of yourself, that means you have a distorted perception of time because you are time. You are time, energy, attention, and money. When I say that you are time, you are time in two elements. You are chronological time, meaning your days, your seconds, your minutes, your, minutes, your hours that you were supposed to be here. And then there is the ebbs and flows, which is your seasonal time, which is your Kairos time. And when you understand that there's ebb and flow and there's Kairos time and there's Kronos time, you don't waste time because you understand what you are made of. You are made up of ebb and flow. You are made up of chronological time. Therefore, you understand that that is the most powerful form of currency that you have that cannot be returned to you. And because of that, you don't waste it. But when you have a distorted perception of yourself, you have a distorted perception of time. Therefore, this is what this does to you when you waste time in these situations that ain't really working for you. It subconsciously creates or instills beliefs of scarcity, urgency. It, um, it creates a subconscious pressure to feel like you got to achieve societal milestones, like you need to be married by 30, like you need to be this by this age, like you need to have babies by this age. You start going into all of this, but you end up wasting time because the external standards that you're trying to set, set or keep by wasting your time is, is leading you to anxiety. The longer you stay in that situation or that relationship that you know is a wrap, the more anxious you get. The more you keep trying to have conversations with him about commitment and marrying you, the more anxious that you get that you're about to lose him. Why? Because you know you're wasting your time. You know you're wasting your time. You feel it in your spirit. You feel it in your soul. But you want to keep going because you want what you want. I can't help the way I feel. You actually can't help the way that you feel. But that's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother lesson. When you, <laughs> when you have this skewed perception of time, and you have this skewed perception of yourself. What happens that you forget that you're not, you're not infinite. You forget that you're not going to be here forever. You forget the value of living in the present. You forget the value of appreciating every moment because you spend all of your time waking and going to sleep, worrying about someone else. You are wasting time and you are slowly deteriorating emotionally, mentally, because you are stressing yourself out, trying to get this person on board with the time that what you want. I want to get married in this time frame. You don't even know if this is the person. You're trying to force this person to do this because you're on this timeline and you're wasting your time. And you know you're wasting your time. You know it hurts, but you know you're wasting your time. And it's time for you to really start being honest about that because wasting time chasing idealized versions of love you know via societal expectations it's going to lead to you being spiritually unfulfilled it's going to lead to you feeling like you lack purpose because this is exactly what happens when you give all your energy to a situation to a relationship you had no business being in that really was not for you you just broken when you get done now you got to do a whole reset and repair which in reality is holding you back it holds you back because you're wasting time. But this is what happens when you don't understand what love is. This is what happens when you don't really know if your desires are your own. This is what happens when you put yourself in experiences, rush yourself into them because you think you're ready. You waste time. And time is the highest form of currency that you cannot get back. So you have wasted your years and you think that they buy you loyalty. See, this is what we mess up as women. We swear up and down if you're going to give somebody your years that they're going to turn around and give you a return on your investment. Baby, you better stop playing yourself. Let me let me, let me me put you on game when it comes down to people who want to use you. Okay? 
If somebody wants to use you, and let's just say that it's a man and he wants to use you and you make yourself available to be used, he is going to use you. If you want to fill out his applications and you want to do all of this stuff and do, he going to let you do all that. He going to use all your masculine energy to rise up above you. And then he's going to choose someone else. He's going to choose someone else because he don't want a man. And yes, he took everything for you. And yes, he took it with a smile. And yes, he acted like he was grateful. But in reality, baby, that creates resentment because you're mothering. You're suggesting. You're, you're, you're trying so hard. You're organizing things. You're, you're planning things. You out of position. You are in your masculine. And of course, I'm going to use your energy to get ahead. Why not? See, you think you think because you operate from a space of morality and righteousness that other people are going to be doing the same thing with you? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay? I don't think so. He will use you. Use you dry, baby. Dry you up. Because you want you want so bad to show that you, I got you and I got your back and I'm not like them and I'm not going to leave you and I'm going to heal you and we could do this together and we can build. He will build on your back. And, it, and it's going to age you out. You better speak on it. Because whatever you, when you give your time, energy, attention and your money to things that don't return on you, baby, you don't get that return. You cash out in this zero. You looking crazy. That's why you looking sick. You looking dull. You've aged 20 years and 11 months of dealing with this person. All because you're not aware of yourself. You're not aware of what love is. You're not aware of what love is. So you don't know that what you really desire. So you can't articulate that. Therefore, you throw yourself into experiences because you want to feel something. Because it's yellow. Remember? Right? You want to feel something. So you throw yourself into experience and you waste time. You waste time. So here's the question. How much time have you wasted? How much time have you wasted? Like really. When you really look at the past. How much time have you wasted? What has been the return on the investment of that time? Because one thing about time baby. is time going to keep rolling. It's about what you're going to do in this time. Time is going to continue to keep rolling. What are you going to do? Okay. What are you going to do? How much time have you wasted? That's the question. So now let's get into this one. In 2024, an estimated 47% of Americans will be single. Like I said, these stats, I've already stated the sources of where these stats have come from. But these are 2024 stats, beloved. Okay? 2024 stats. So guess what? Let's go to self. Because we've now dealt with love. We've dealt with desire. We've dealt with time. We've dealt with experience. We've dealt with time. And now we're going to deal with the root of it all. Self. When you are disconnected from your authentic self. When you need people to identify you. See, we live in a society right now. Where I understand we want to belong. People want to belong. Nobody wants to feel alienated. Nobody wants to feel by themselves. Nobody wants to feel these things. But here, here's the reality. Don't be so desperate. For friendship, companionship, um, romantic relationship, that you lose your identity. Because the reality of the situation is this. When you don't know who you are, you set up for a life that's beneath you. See, if a queen was raised as a peasant all her life and nobody ever told her it was a queen or ever, ever invited her to the palace or and you know, let her know about her lineage and her heritage, she will continue to act like a peasant. It's because you don't know self, you treat yourself like trash. When you are disconnected from your authentic self, this can manifest subconsciously in feelings of unworthiness. This is why you trash relationships or jobs or businesses or money and different things that come. That's why you self-sabotage like you do. Because you don't think you're worth it. Now you lie on social media and say you I'm worth it. I ain't even a diddy. I mean you tell them you tell them men that you ain't finna blame me. I know my worth. You don't. And they know you don't know your worth because of the way you acted. Because men are the masters of energy reading. See, we are the masters of intuition. Men are not dumb. They are not dumb. Baby, if you out here lying, talking about, oh, I'm so I'm celibate and this and this, and this. baby, if you home it, they're gonna smell a hoe on you. And they're gonna try you. 
I'm telling you because I have men in my community who I adore and I love and we have these conversations all the time. All the time. Your energy don't lie, beloved. Your mouth do. But your energy most definitely is not lying, is not fooling anybody. And you will not fool men because you're not better at it than them when it comes down to energy reading. We are better at intuition. That's our strength. Because the feminine is internal. The masculine is external. So them stepping out, yeah, it's, that's, that's, that's their aspect. And you have to understand that about yourself. Being disconnected can also look like imposter syndrome. Soon as somebody does something for you, give you an award, something great happens in your life, you think that you're not deserving. You think that you're not deserving and you have these patterns in your mind. So you feel like an imposter and you start doing dumb stuff like not showing up or playing small. Or dimming your light. Or seeking validations on whether or not you look cute or not. Girl, you don't know if you look cute. You don't know if you look good. If you got to ask somebody else if you look good, you know you don't look good. Change. See, it's about you knowing yourself. Nobody should be able, have to tell you that. That's sprinkles. You the ice cream. That's additives. We don't need the additives, beloved. We need the foundation to be laid. And you are the foundation layer. So if you are not... If you are disconnected from yourself to where you don't understand your identity, it's going to be very hard for you to love. Because you don't even know yourself enough to love yourself, to not put yourself in certain situations, to nurture yourself, to accept yourself to the fullness, to be yourself. Okay? Feeling inadequate due to societal pressures is going to hinder your spiritual growth. You trying to please people. Can't please God. It's an oxymoron. Can't. Can't please people and please the one that created you. Your self-concept is so key to how you operate, how you think, what you do, who you choose into your life experience, and so much more. You have got to understand your internal innate worth so you can stop performing for people to get them to love you, to keep you. Because, baby, listen, I'm going to be me. Thank you, my love, for these gifts. I'm going to be me. You're going to like it or love it. I'm going to be cool with it. I'm not asking if a man likes me. Do I like him and does he fit? Can Is he a proper suitor for me? Does he have a mission for me to submit under? See, I ain't plan. What, what are we doing? I know me. I want land. So a brother without resources who's not resourceful can't do anything for me. I have nothing against them. They can go build on somebody else's back. Who down for that? I'm not the one. I want land. And if I have resources and you have no resources, then what we look like? What are we doing? I see queens out here. You degreed out. You doing this. You doing that. You got all these degrees. And you messing with dude at home who can't even spell. You let him run you around ragged while he playing a video game while you at work. I don't understand. I don't understand. You know why you're doing that? Because you want somebody that's a little bit beneath you so you can try to control them because you got a little bit more than them because you're really scared. You're really scared because your, your past choices ain't been that hot. So you tried to choose what you thought were, was kind of safe, but you're getting played in your face. You got to pay for company. You got to pay for company. When all you need to do is really do your work and you can attract what it is that you really desire into your experience. Because when you attract it into your experience, your mindset will be so elevated that you will rise up from the kids table and stop eating children's food and sit with the grown folks. And you'll recognize the grown folks at the table because I promise you the kitty table. It don't hit like the grown folks table, beloved. Bet you that. That's real facts. But you have to understand and you have to know your self. Your concept of self on a spiritual level is recognizing your internal worth. Beyond external measures, embracing your divine essence, sitting with yourself, allowing yourself to be feminine. So if you are wondering, and that's the question, here's the question when it comes down to self. Do I need to, am I in a state of desperation? Do I need to decenter men? This question right here. If you can answer this clearly, 
maybe you might want to consider, okay, maybe I can kind of, you know, no problem. All praise to the most high, y'all. Who are you outside of what you do for others? Who are you outside of what you do at work? Who are you? If somebody wants to ask you, tell me about you, is the first thing you're going to say is talk about what you do for work? Talk about what you do for other people? Talk about your roles and how you serve? See, when you come out and you do that, you scream nothing but, I'm the help! I'm the help! I'm the help! I'll pick up your bags, I'm the help! I'm the help! I will, I will help you! I will pick, yeah, what? Mm-hmm. That's exactly what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. I'll do this as soon as they start talking about their dreams. Oh, yes, I got a connection here. Ain't nobody asked you for that. But the minute that somebody takes that and they don't give you back what you want. Because that's masculine energy. Let me help you out, too. For the queens who like to lead with what they do, whether it is your job, whether it is how you serve. Whether it, is, whether it is how you perform in the bedroom, all those things are masculine energy. To give your body hoping to get a relationship is masculine energy. Why? Because men give to receive. Women receive to give. Women receive to give. Yeah. Even when you think about us bearing kids, don't we have to receive to give? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, you're giving to receive. No, you silently investing. And your manifestations are coming up monstrous, like just a monstrosity, baby. They, they just, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. All because you don't understand the foundation of love. All because your desires are truly not your own. All because the experiences that you've thrown yourself into has caused you to waste so much time that you don't what? Recognize yourself anymore. You don't know you anymore and you probably on your last leg in this relationship thing and this relationship gang and building healthy masculine support around you you're probably extremely exhausted but that's what happens when you don't really understand how to love yourself so that you can love your neighbor because you're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself understanding that you are a temple you are a temple and you are to treat yourself in that manner I'm going to read these stats again so you can hear me. 88% of Americans marry for love, making this the most common motivation for the union. Most people don't even know what love is. They got a Disney version of love. So just imagine the divorce stats make perfect sense. The relationship stats about them not working make perfect sense. Because if everyone in this country, for the most part, 88% of Americans is what it says. Marry for love. And that's the primary motivation. I don't, hear, I don't hear alignment. I don't hear aligned values. I don't hear equally yoked. Those are the things that actually make things long lasting. But we don't really know what love is. So a recent survey also says that 61% of men and women desire to get married. The desires. Why do we desire to get married when we don't understand we marrying for love, but we don't know what love is? About 19% of our teenagers are currently involved in romantic relationships what do they know about love? Who's teaching them? Where are their desires coming from? What type of experiences are they putting themselves in? See, we need to start asking these type of questions. Because it's a real thing. In 2020, I'm mean, sorry, the average length of a courtship is two years. How many two-year relationships have you been in? Five years? Seven? What's the return on the investment? What did you get out of that that amplified you and that elevated you? And I'm not just talking about even if you did get married. What, 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 what came from that for you? And lastly, in 2024, an estimated 47% of Americans will be single. Again, who are you outside of what you do for others? Who are you outside of your job? Who are you? Because you need to be aware of who you are so you can be comfortable being with yourself. Because if you ain't comfortable being with yourself, you ain't ready and you need to decenter men. You ain't ready to be in a relationship if you're not in a space where you're in a healthy relationship and you can't sit with yourself. If you don't know how to sit in a season of being single and understanding and growing and resetting, you need to decenter. So again, I'm asking you these five questions. I'm going to just run it to you. Who taught you about romantic love? Television? Parents? Was that it? 
How did that, how's that working for you? Because that's your training. Second question, are your desires your own? Who taught you to drink Sprite? Your body want water. Who told you to eat fast food? Your body want whole food. Who told you that the primary marriage, the primary, that butterflies is how you know that someone loves you when really and truly butterflies is a warning. It is literally a flight or flight or fight response telling you, Molly, you in danger, girl. But Disney told us that we need butterflies in our stomach. So are your desires your own? Really? Have you studied your relationship cycles and your relationship patterns? How much time have you wasted? And who are you outside of what you do for others and what you do for work? Now, if you answer those questions with any form of no, any form of confusion, any form of not knowing, you're not ready to be in healthy partnership with someone. You can be in partnership. Just like just like this person tried to come on in and be a little snazzy. Like if you know why are you not married? Baby, being in partnership, being being with somebody is nothing. I promise you, getting a man is not a problem. It's about being in alignment, though. I'm a very intentional woman and I'm a master manifester. I don't play I don't I don't play those type of games. And you shouldn't play those type of games either. This is going to require you to decenter. This is going to require you to regain focus. This is going to require you to activate so you can create the life you want. Now, if you want to know how to do these things, I'm going to give you the one the three things, four things that you can do so you can get it. Okay? The Radiant Roots reparenting journey for feminine souls. Your training as a child is how you are moving as an adult. What you learned about love, what you learned about money, what you learned about everything has started in your home. So you are going to have to, if you did not grow up in a home with stability, structure, standards, schedule, play time. If you struggle to trust yourself, this is an inner child issue. And it's time for you to grab that master class, not that workshop that's going to support you in that. I'm going to walk you through the process of reparenting your inner child so you can create that structure, that standards, the schedule, playtime, and that stability necessary. Because your relationship with your inner child is going to set the tone for every other relationship that you have as well. Because truthfully, the reason why you keep choosing that clown to be with is because your inner child is running your life. Your inner child is the needy one. You don't know how to support her or serve her, which is why she looks for other people to support and serve her. That's why she looks for validation. That's why she's so needy. That's why you're so needy. Because your inner child is running your life. See, some of us, I and I understand because I spent 20 years as a 12-year-old. I spent 20 years as a 12-year-old on the inside. Okay? So, no, 21. So it wasn't until I was 33 when I started doing my work. I'm 40 now. When I started doing really the intentional work to build a relationship with my inner child, that was a huge part of me being able to create a six-figure business because I was able to heal a major wound. One of the major things that I do is I support my clients in removing money blocks, creative blocks, and all of these things. Making money is not hard. You can you can have a six-figure business. All you need for real. If you want a six-figure business, you need 10 people to pay. You need a product, a service that you can create. And you got $10,000, $20,000, $100,000, million dollar ideas in your mind. You just need to create a service. That can't resist and you need 10 people to buy that's a hundred thousand dollars so what are we talking about you can't build the business that's the easy part the hard part is reparenting your inner child so you can focus the hard part is remaining stable because your inner child is out of pocket the hard part is remaining disciplined okay and the aspects of that are going to be taught in the radiant roots reparenting journey for feminine souls that master that workshop he's saying master class that workshop is 197 you can get it with Klarna firm and afterpay what that's going to do is this is your training and this is how you're going to start the process of building a relationship with yourself that's first level okay second level if you are a woman got a pretty decent relationship with your inner child but the truth of the matter is you keep manifesting and magnetizing people towards you that are literally not good for you. They are just not the people that need to be in your existence, that need to be in, in your life. So if your focus right now is masterful manifestation as far as when it comes down to the people in your experience, if your focus right now is masterful magnetism, so you are drawing in the right people into your experience, and if your 
thing right now is self-management because you want to get a hold of yourself and raise your emotional intelligence. The relationships and revenue, that course is 197 as well. And that's going to be the one to help you because that's going to help you understand the duality of your love language. See, people talk about the love languages, but it's the flip side of that too that you need to know about. That's a trigger. And you need to be aware of that trigger because you are responsible for your own triggers. So the relationships and revenue course is going to support you in being able to understand how you're manifesting these things into your life. Also teaching you how you magnetize things into your life and how to shift it so you're magnetizing the right things into your experience. And also how to manage yourself so you're not outpouring too much. Listen. When you're giving away too much of your energy internally, it's because you don't understand the energy within you is divine. When you know that you got liquid gold on the inside of you, baby, you don't give it to everybody. You don't give it to everyone. That's not what you do. It's reserved for those who are worthy. Okay? And you really have to think and consider that when it comes down to how you're managing yourself. We don't manage ourselves well. We just, I want to, you know, I'm a kind person. I just got a big heart. Having a big heart is not a flex. It's only a flex when you got bigger boundaries. If your boundaries ain't big, stop talking about your heart. It don't matter. Because it's getting ran over. It's getting ran through. So unless you got bigger boundaries, there's no need for you to brag on your big heart. Because that's not a flex. It's not a flex. It attracts narcissistic, parasitic people to your existence. It's not a flex. I just got a big heart. I don't know. You get it. You meet people. You meet these men and you telling them all the trauma. And air. I, you... you <laughs> You're telling them all of these things about you because you're hoping that if I tell you this ahead of time, you're not going to do this thing to me. What you're doing in actuality is, is revealing that you have no boundaries and you are welcoming someone else to be a parasite into your existence. You are welcoming, some, welcoming someone else into your existence who no longer respects you because now I see that you're a doormat. Now I see you a suck. I'm a lick. You really have to start thinking about this because it's very very important your relationship with yourself is going to set the tone how you manage yourself sets the tone of how people are going to treat you it is really 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 that simple you can get that course it's 197 that one is not in the bio if you want relationships to revenue d send me a message right now that just says rr and i'll send you the link you can get all my products with Klarna affirm, affirm and afterpay if you know that you really need to do with how you're manifesting these people into your existence, the relationships and revenue course is going to support you. The third level of support that I'm going to be offering. Like I said, I don't have a link for that. The link for the reparenting journey is in the bio. You can click the link in the bio and get that. Client or firm after pay 197 For relationships and revenue, you will have to DM me specifically and say RR for me to send you that link. And when I send that link, that link is only going to be active for 48 hours. So if you do not get it, you're not going to be able to get it. Okay? So I'm working with the women who are ready. Um, third thing is, if you need to break free from negative cycles in general in your life outside of relationships, it's just overall, you got bad cycles with money. You got bad cycles with men. You got bad cycles with just health. You just got a lot of bad cycles that just keep happening over and over again. If you desire to turn your passions into profit and to reprogram your mind for success, then you want the divine alignment bundle because that's going to support you in doing that. You're going to do a generational curse breaking activity that will support you in finding out how your family or what pinpoint who got off the path of abundance? Because abundance is your birthright. Plentifulness is your birthright. So if you're not experiencing that in your life, somewhere in your lineage, somebody got off the path. And when you decide to get the divine alignment bundle, you choose to activate that by shifting into a new reality, which changes everything for the people who are coming after you. Okay? It is very important and very vital for you to understand that in order for you to elevate, you're going to have to dig up the root you're going to have to replant and you're going to have to do your work. So that align, that divine alignment bundle is 222. You get that with Klarna Firm and Afterpay. That is my top seller. That is the one. That was my top seller last year. That is the one that has helped women heal addictions. That has supported women in making passive income because I teach you how to make passive income in that, um, in that bundle. That is the one where women have been able to reprogram their minds. This is where women have been able to elevate their communication with their partners by knowing what they want. Women have manifested lives that they truly desire from working with the alignment bundle. Um, so it's absolutely amazing. You get that in the bio. Click the link in the bio to be able to get access. The last thing is 
The first three are courses. They are self-study. You have no access. We're not working together. You have just the information that I give you, which is very powerful and very impactful when you do the work. If you're not, if you're new to me, I'm not new to this. I'm very true to this. My results speak for themselves. If you do the work, this works. If you don't do the work, it don't work. So, I mean, it literally is on you. Belief impacts biology and biology influences the way you behave. So if you believe this is serious, you'll take it serious and you'll see your life change in a serious way. If you don't, you won't. I mean, either way I go, I'm going to sleep because I my position is to let you know, to make you aware what you choose to do after that has absolutely nothing to do with me. Now. Here's the last thing where I was talking about the pattern breaking session. So I have this new service called the pattern breaking session. If you have noticed or you can't seem to find the pattern of why you keep repeating dealing with the same type of people, but in different bodies, it's because you're not recognizing the pattern. The pattern breaking session is where I am going to help you trace from where it started to where you are and how you're going to flip it and reverse it. To get out of it okay that is what we're going to do when you write it down and make it plain like it tells you in scripture at some at that point it becomes law or you get to make a decision to change and shift the law so i'm going to help you like i said trace the pattern of these relationships and start we're going to come all the way back to where you are then we're going to flip it and reverse it okay so you don't have to go in that way anymore and that you really recognize the pattern so when you see it in someone else that you're trying to date or someone else that you're trying to see, then you will recognize, hey, this is a part of my pattern and I don't really want to participate in that. Let me go ahead and let this go so I don't waste my own time and so I can make sure that I am where I need to be, okay? That session, you're not going to be able to find that in the bio as well. If you want that, you're going to have to DM me PB. DM me PB if you want the link to that. Those sessions are 297 you get me for 60 minutes, okay? And then you get the video as well that comes with it for lifetime access. Sessions with me are uh, currently $9.97 an hour. So me doing these sessions, I'm only offering these sessions for next week because a lot of women have been coming in with this influx. So if you want this session, you have to book it this week and you have to send me a message that says, PB in order for you to be able to get access. So if you want relationships and revenue, send me RR, which focuses on masterful manifestation, masterful magnetism, and self-management. Or you can send me PB for the pattern breaking session for $297. Klarna Firm and Afterpay are available for all of these. What questions do you guys have for me before I get ready to get off here? Because I'm about to get off here. Any questions I'm going to take? A few. So first come, first serve. Any questions about what I talked about today or any questions about any of the services that I offer. And congratulations because a couple of people bought some courses while I was on live. So congratulations to them um, for getting ready to do your work in shifts. So I'm really, really excited. Um, definitely, definitely. If your relationship with yourself is not solid, please start with reparenting your inner child. If you don't do nothing else, click the link to the bio and get that for yourself. So you can start doing that work because it's so important. And where we're going as a society, y'all, you're going to have to learn how to be in your heart as a woman. Some of us has done have done too much time in our heads and, and, and being in your head is not going to support you where things are going. Okay? So, so vital, so important. Um, Did you say you were divorced? Any um, advice for women initiating that process? Ah, I am. Um, what would I say? First thing I would say is to trust the most high. Um, trust the most high and ask for direction and guidance step by step. Place your complete and other trust and confidence and rely only on the one that created you throughout this process. Um... I know you may feel like life may be over. I know you may feel like, what am I going to do? Because I didn't expect this to be like this. You know, nobody gets married hoping to get divorced. Um, but what I am here to tell you is that your life is not over. And though you may feel like you might be in the worst place in your life, because trust me, I've been there. Um, the weeping that you may endure, like it says in scripture, 
it's just not going to, the pain you experience is not going to measure up to the joy on the other side of that. If you can just do what it says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Um, acknowledge him in all of your ways and trust. I'm sorry. And tr I'm sorry. Tr acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. Um, when I filed for divorce, I was very sad. Um, because it's not something I envisioned doing. But when I finally got in that space to release it, like I had been instructed to, the next month I hit $15,000 in my business. I had never hit that high in my business. The block was my inability to let go what was not supposed to continue. And sometimes when we hold on to things that we are not supposed to continue, you block your next level. So the third thing that I would tell you is to be sure not to block your next level and to trust that the most high will keep you and cover you. So that's what I got. So hopefully that supports you and that helps you. Let me see. How do you heal? Oh my God, y'all. This thing ain't for the worry me. How do you heal self-esteem on the floor? How do you heal self-esteem on the floor from one disappointment after another? Um, what's the name of the new course that'll track you from start to finish? Um, it's the it's the uh, pattern breaking session. So just DM me PB, and I'm gonna send you a link so you can get that because y'all have to schedule those quick. Because I'm I'm only gonna have a couple of those. I think I'm gonna max out at seven. And y'all gonna I got like forty thousand followers here. There's YouTube. There's my email. So those are gonna go quick. I only have seven spots for that. Um, but how do you heal your self esteem on the floor? from one disappointment to another um i guess my question would be when it comes down to the disappointments are the disappointments external if the are the disappointments external or are these things that are internally happening on the inside of self um because external things you cannot control but what you can control is your inner so do you have control of yourself when externally things are happening or are you tending to crash or explode or panic or get anxious when things are happening for you um that's my first question because that's going to help me kind of determine if we're dealing with something internal or if we're really dealing with something on the form of external when it comes down to these disappointments one after another <clears throat> you're welcome all praises to the most high let me go back both okay so first things first is the external you can't control so i have this thing called you know you have your circle right I'll, I'll give this example i love to give this fire example so let's say you witness a wreck okay let's say you witness a wreck and you're in the car you're in the back like the wreck is all the way at the front right out of your control you know they're stopping traffic you know that somebody got hurt it's not really anything that you can do immediately to touch that situation what you probably could do is pick up the phone and call 911, which means that you can influence the situation. You may not be able to shift it or change it, but you can influence the situation by making a phone call, right? That's something that's within your control. You have to start assessing things that are within your control. If you have a child that's riding a bike in front of you, and or if you have a child in front of you who's about to walk into the street, you can grab that child. That's within your control. The things that are happening on the inside of you, your emotions... Your feelings, all of those things are within your control. Your mind is like a house. And on the right side of your mind is where emotions are. But just imagine in that house, it's only one room for a guest. So only one of your emotions can join you, right, at your house. So you get to choose who gets to stay in your house. When sadness comes to your house, do they make a mess because they're eating ice cream, being slouchy, sloppy, sad? Do you want that type of essence in your house? No. Okay. So what does happiness look like when it comes into your house? You make a decision about what your mood is going to be and how you're going to see a situation. One of the ways that a lot of women who understand the power of themselves win or magnetize things to themselves, they focus on what they want. They do not focus on what they don't want. Before I became a six-figure business owner, I started to act like one. I wrote like I was one. I wrote letters to myself about how I was doing this and doing that. So when I became one, 
there was no shift and no change in my personality. I just was embodying the energy that I had already been embodying before it happened when my bank account was zero. So it's about what you're choosing to feed. External things you can't control. You ask the most high to give you strength to be able to assess things that you need. Assess the things that you actually need to take in and reject the things that you don't need to take in. And then you begin to ask yourself, is there anything that I can do to be able to assist or support or shift this situation? If the answer is no, pass the brick. Pass the brick to the one that created you. Pass the weight. Because what sense does it make for you to be able to carry weight of something that you can't control? It ruins your organs. It weakens your immune system. And it puts you in a position that makes you sick. So you have to decide, is this situation worth being sick over? Because understand, when you put your body in a frequent state of sickness, you suscept you are more susceptible to developing long-term illnesses. And all I'm saying is, is whatever happening, whatever is happening, is it worth the deterioration of your health spiritually mentally and emotionally and if it's not pass the brick okay so deal with you choose your mood and what you choose to invest in and what you choose to give your time energy attention to emotion to and the things that are not worthy of that pass the brick because it's too heavy because if you're not passing the brick that means you're carrying a multitude of them and eventually bricks are going to weigh you down okay how do you know when to let go when you don't get a clear message. Hmm. The fact that you have to ask when already lets me know that you already know that you have to move. Because if you come out of side of yourself to say, I'm not getting a clear answer on when, is it that the time could be now? Is it that the timeline is really on you? Is it that this is a scenario that you should be walking away from? What exactly is it when you say let go? Are we letting go of people? Are we letting go of emotions? What are we letting go of? Thank you. What's the course called again? Um, relation, relationships and revenue. If that's the one that you desire, that one is for master magnetism and manifestation and self-management. You would DM me RR and I'll send you a link for 197 for that one. If you want the pattern tracing or the pattern recognition, pattern breaking, I'm sorry, session, then you would DM me PB and I'll send you a link and it's 297. Okay. But Monique, if you let me, if you could let me know if it's a relationship, or is it just feelings? Like, because if it's a relationship, you're like, do you know when you need to let go? If you perform it, you need to let it go. If you're not being yourself, if you can't be yourself, if you're not free enough to be who you truly are, relationship, okay. So is this relationship, how is this relationship elevating you? That's what you have to start asking yourself. How is this moving forward? Because anything that's not growing is dying. So if you're in a relationship and it's dying, you have to ask yourself, do you want to die with it? Because that's a real thing. Are you willing to die with it? Like give all your time, energy, attention, money, or are you able to assess it and look at it and say, you know what? This is not what I'm supposed to be doing. So this ain't going to work. Financially only? Oh yeah, release that. Because the most high is your supply. That's how you release that. Now, at that point, it becomes, do you want to release it? Because it's trust. I've seen a... I think it was like a cute little picture it was a little girl and it was supposed to be a depiction of the most high the girl was holding a bear and she was holding it tight she was like but i want it and behind the depiction of the most high he had a huge bear and he had his hand up say if you could just trust me by giving me that bear i got something else for you so if it's financial only you are an abundant being and you're able to create income for yourself. So there's no need for you to solely rely on another human being for financial support simply because that person could A, get up and leave you or B, leave this earth. So it's about you becoming very confident and very sure of yourself and assessing this particular relationship. And if it's solely for finances, then that's not a help. That's not a... That's not a basis for you to remain in a situation if that is not healthy for you. Okay? So I would really start asking the Most High for the next step. Because one thing about the Most High is so funny. May not give you the full plan, but will give you the next step. So ask for the next step. 
um, and for the strength for you to be able to move and for the trust. Because I understand when you're leaving a situation where finances are involved, it's a little scary, especially if it's been a little comfortable. But this is where your faith is and femininity is based and rooted in faith. In your trust. See, we get it twisted. We think, oh my God, I trusted you. You broke my trust. You were never supposed to put all your trust in it, man. It's about you trusting the most high. And when that situation is revealed to you, you thank the most high that it came out in the rents. Because that released a situation for you so you can receive what's actually coming next for you. So it's all about mindset. It's all about how you see it. I live in a space of abundance. So I'm not going to not have. Um, unless I disconnect from the source and I don't plan to ever disconnect from the source. So when you're connected to the source, everyone else is resources. Okay. So yeah, babe, hopefully that helps. Absolutely. He wants to give us so much more and we hold on to little, hold on to little. Okay. Um, and if you need some more support with that, think about, um, grabbing the relationships and revenue because I think that would be really good for you, Monique. Um, because what that will do is that that will put you in position to masterfully manifest what it is you really desire, to magnetize what you really desire, and to manage yourself through the process. Okay, all right, my loves, that's it. I'm going to get off here. Thank y'all so much for y'all time, for your patience. Um, for those who have DM me, I'm going to send you these links really quickly. Congratulations to those who have purchased already. All praises to the most high. Um, it is my prayer that you, uh, something in this just inspired you to think, take action, and that it was edifying. So happy Sunday. I plan on seeing y'all tomorrow because I'm really going to be talking. I'm going to be talking about some amazing stuff. So if you're on my email list, make sure you get on it. If you're not, if you're on my email list, you'll get the email. So Lord willing, I will see y'all tomorrow. Have an amazing, amazing, amazing night. Peace out.